Hi, everyone. My name is Nicolette Gooding. I am a Master's of Social Work student at the University of Toronto, currently completing my practicum with For a Safer Space. Today, I'm going to be discussing what physical abuse is and how it affects each and every one of us in each and our communities. So, abuse. We know that abuse can be described as a traumatic situation. So how would we be able to describe exactly what is physical abuse? Physical abuse can be described as a non-accidental use of force that results in bodily injury, pain, or impairment. It's really important to note that both physical and financial abuse, um, financial abuse was covered in the previous video, are both forms of gender-based violence that result in abusers undermining their partner's independence. And it's really important, again, to remember that gender-based violence in itself is rooted in gender inequality, where the abuser is often after power and control over their partner's lives. Those who experience physical abuse may also experience being kicked, slapped, choked, bitten, punched, burned, cut, bruised, and many of the other forms of um, actions that can cause any bodily harm, injury, or um, physical impairment. So what are the effects of physical abuse? Some diagnoses would have folks who experience physical abuse be experiencing PTSD because if somebody has heard them, it often leads to memories of disassociation, trauma, and often emotional regulation issues. These feelings of shame and distorted realities often result in folks having PTSD. Something that another effect of physical abuse is depression and anxiety. These forms of symptoms are experienced due to folks feeling like if somebody that loves us is able to hurt them, then they have feelings that there might be something wrong with them. These thought processes can lead to very unhealthy coping mechanisms to numb the person from really distracting them from the pain of what's going on. Lastly, Medical issues in the later age in people's lives, such as ulcers, high blood pressure, asthma, and even allergies can develop as they've been living in stress for so long that's actually causing medical implications in their life. What can be helpful for healing? So some forms of therapy can be really helpful for physical forms of violence, just because, again, the effects and the long-term effects of that physical violence can be so detrimental, especially for cases with PTSD. So a lot of folks um, would recommend talk therapy, which is you know the ability to discuss and actually talk through your trauma and giving your brain some time to process what was went through. CBT, um, cognitive behavioral theory, um, also a trauma-focused treatment, and really focused on relaxation training and breathing techniques as well as emotional regulation. Cognitive coping strategies are also very helpful as it includes replacing negative thoughts with positive ones. Medication is something that's also possible, but is usually and only prescribed if a therapist finds that their client cannot cope and they are drowning in their symptoms and not able to apply these skills. And lastly, EMDR, eye movement and desensitization processing, that has also been very helpful and found to be supportive of clients. Other options include speaking to someone that you trust, such as a close friend, family member, making sure to maintain your health, that includes exercising, eating food, staying active, not isolating yourself, and also practicing mindfulness and staying in touch with yourself, your feelings, and level of self-awareness. 
Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope it was helpful and uh, take care.